Turning again to that chapter that we read together, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We may read from verse 11. Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Our shorter catechism teaches us that some sins are more heinous in the sight of God than others. And that is, of course, true. But nevertheless, Every sin has to be repented of. While we know that there are some sins that are more grievous, but there is no sin that doesn't need the forgiveness of God. We sometimes speak about, well, a small sin. There's just a small sin. And again, I'm sure we all know what that means. But as long as we are not making excuses when we use that kind of language, because God hates every sin, and every one of us are sinners who commit sin against God. Now much of what is recorded for us in Scripture in many places makes clear to us that even the most privileged and the most holy of men and women do from time to time fall into sin and grievous sin for many. And for us, we have to learn from these things. As the apostle says here, In verse 11, these things happen to them for examples, and they are written for our admonition. They are there for us to learn from them and to look to the Lord for help in these situations. And we see time from time, as I said in the Bible and Scripture, how we need to learn from history, how we need to learn from the experience of those who have gone before us, how often we read of the children of Israel and their wanderings away from God. At times you think, how could they possibly do it when you consider how much the Lord had blessed them, the miraculous ways in which he had delivered them, and yet we find them so often unthankful and wandering away from the Lord. But friends, before we start as it were, casting stones at others. Should we not consider ourselves? And despite all the blessings you and I have known of God, how often it is that we are not as faithful and we wander away from him. All scripture, according to Second Timothy, all scripture is given to us for Profitable for doctrine, teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. You see, it's not just lovely little stories that's in Scripture. And there are beautiful, if I can use the word story, it's not a word I like to use too much with regard to Scripture. There are beautiful accounts that we have, but it's also there to warn us in many places, to teach us, to instruct us, and to correct us. Now here we, at the beginning of here, we see of those that we read about, and they were told that 
in verse 5, those who had gone before thinking about Moses and children of Israel, verse 5, many of them God was not well pleased with, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. We see that. And it goes on that, now these things, as I said, were for our examples in, in verse 6. And uh, again, we see in verses 7 and all the way through to uh, verse 10 there, how things were and their temptations there and how they fell into sin time and time again. Comes back again to verse 11. Now all things happened unto them for examples and written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are to come. And so time and time again, what is brought before us are a reminder of what's in Scripture is for us to learn from these things. And so this says uh, to all of us here, in verse 12 particularly, and how we need to watch this, friends, wherefore let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. And that, friends, for each and every one of us. Oh, not to be careful that we are not thinking that we have no problems and nothing will happen to me and I will keep on being faithful and maybe finding fault with those who might have fallen away or not as faithful as they used to be. We all need him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. There were those of the children of Israel here who had all the blessings and yet despite all that, God was not pleased with them. Why? Because they had not followed as they ought to have followed and believed as they ought to have heed. Sin had come in with them. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, verse 14, flee from idolatry. That was a great sin with them. They were going after other gods. Now, of course, we can say, well, we are Christians and in a Christian community, and so we don't have that kind of idolatry. But you know, friend, in your own heart, as Scripture teaches elsewhere, that there are many idols we can have in our lives, things that we can easily fall into worshipping and imagining that it is not a big thing, but so often if it draws us away from the Lord, it is an idol in our hearts. Now, you and I can read this text and may take it, depending on our spiritual state, when we read it, we can read it as being an encouragement in verse 13 there. An encouragement or else we can take it as a warning. And in a very real sense, it is both, friends. There is word of warning in it as there is a word of encouragement for us. So then I would like us this morning to consider that, first of all, temptations. There are no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man will not suffer you to be tempted above. God will not suffer you to be tempted what you are able to withstand. But temptation, friends, are common to us all. There is not a single person, however, whoever it is, whoever holy that person will be, who doesn't know something of temptation in their lives. Now, the word here that we have, temptation itself, uh, meaning not just of what we would plainly understand by it, but can also have the idea of trial. And it is used by Peter elsewhere. It is translated as trial by uh, those who have translated our Bible. So a temptation can be a trial, and a trial can be a temptation. But however, here, it's enough to see the word for what it is. We take it in this context. And the idea here is of being enticed. Enticement is the whole idea. Being enticed by something. Something that, that catches us out and something that draws us and some weakness we, we might have that we are apt to fall into. It, is, it has taken you, as it were. It has got a hold of you. Something has happened, a temptation. Now, it can be different for all of us. What may be a temptation to me might not be a temptation to you. But it's very real at the same time. And so this is what we have here. Something that has, take, that, that has got a hold of you, 
that are sees you as an enemy would. That's the whole idea. As you, you're taken captive by it. No friend, who here doesn't know something of that in our own experience? To be, as it were, ensnared, to be taken by something, to, to, be, to be brought under its power. Maybe not for long at times. Other times can be quite some time. Maybe unexpected. Maybe always unexpected in one sense. But when you look back on it very often, is it not very often because we have put ourselves into a danger zone and we have not done, let's say, flee from idolatry, flee from any other sin. And that's what we have here. Now, as I said, we should never think either, well, what I'm going through, nobody else is going through. Nobody else has ever faced this. And that very often, friends, is a weapon that Satan uses. The devil uses that very often when the Lord's people are going through difficulties, when you are being tempted. They will say, the devil will say to you, well, no one else would allow this into their lives but you. Therefore, surely you can't be a Christian. Therefore, you haven't got any hope if you've allowed this to happen in your life. And Satan will suggest that to us. Friends, that is just from the pit of hell. And like everything else, Satan says it's a lie. And it is there for a purpose to try and draw you in. And, or if you like, haven't been drawn in, to keep you in and ensnared by him. Of course, Satan wants you to believe your sin is particular to yourself. Of course, he wants you to believe, well, no one else could possibly, no one could be a Christian, no one could have a desire after God if that is in your life at the same time. And even being tempted to sin, a particular sin, he will suggest to you, is a true sign of ungodliness in your own life. In other words, you have no, you're not a Christian, or else if you're seeking the Lord, you cannot ever find God. You can never find forgiveness if you have these thoughts or if you have these temptations in your life. Now, friends, one thing we have to remember, and I'm sure I've said this often enough in this pulpit and elsewhere, temptation itself is not sin. It can lead to sin, but the temptation itself, in and of itself, we know that, of course, the perfect example, the Lord Jesus Christ was in the wilderness. He was tempted, and we can be tempted. He was in all points, we read in Hebrews, tempted as we are, and yet without sin. But you see, the temptation is, as it were, uh, the, the door that opens before you to entice you. And it is in that way trying to seduce you, to coax you, to go through it into sin. But it's not the temptation itself that is the sin. It's the giving in to it. It's being attracted by what is suggested to you. And that door, friends, is a door that in different ways is swung open by the enemy of our soul, depending who you are. As I said earlier on, the door that will tempt me might never tempt you, and vice versa. Whoever we are. It can be that at times you might feel yourself sometimes as if all oh, the temptations before me a thousand times a day. Whether it be one kind of sin or another kind of sin and temptation. Indeed, in one sense I would have to say I believe that it is a common mark of the child of God that he is often faced with that struggle. I'm not saying that we should look for it. I'm not saying that we should want it. But it can be that temptation coming. Oh, you sometimes, it's just me. It's just me. Nobody else is going through what I am going through. Nobody else is tested in that way or tempted in that way. 
But that's not true, friends. What does it say in verse 13 at the beginning there? Look at these words. That hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You see, that should encourage us. Not that we're glad everybody's been tempted the same way. Not that we're glad there's sin in everybody's life. That's not the point at all. The point is, you shouldn't feel that you, you are alone in these situations. But when that door seems so inviting, friends, and it will be at some times more than at other times, beware. Beware, as it were, of reaching out your hand to open the door. Beware of even taking a slightest step out of the path. What path? The path of obedience, according to the word of God. That's where there's safety. And when you step out of that narrow way, you're putting yourself in danger. How often, and maybe even in the most blessed times, you find that out of nowhere a sinful thought comes. Where did that come from? That temptation, your mind wanders away. How often it is, so often is it not the struggle we have in prayer. How often it is then that some things come into your mind and you don't know what you're saying. You may have words and nothing else when you're maybe sitting in church sometimes, you may be reading scripture, the times are these, temptations come in different ways. It's not just, friends, about the physical, as it were. It can often be in the heart and in the mind that it manifests itself even more. Just because you're not sin to be tempted into some outward sin, and some are, sadly. But don't ever think, and that if, you, if that is true, that that is, puts you apart from anyone else. All of us are sinners, and we're still sinners. By God's grace, we may be saved sinners, but we're still sinners. How often maybe we have these times then, when maybe that, as it were, uh, the door of temptation swings open unexpectedly, and you're faced with some awful sin in your life. This is true often for the Lord's people. Indeed, in one sense, it is a mark of knowing something else that grieves you so much when these things happen. But they are temptations are common to all. And then, secondly, but as I said, Temptation itself is not the sin. It's giving in to it. And secondly, how far temptation can go in your own experience? Well, very far. Very far. We have said that temptation itself is not sin, but nevertheless, it can be painful and it can be very destructive. Even having to face the temptation can be a painful struggle at times. Even if you don't fall into the sin, as it were. The evil one will try to wear you down. And he can do that often to open the door of temptation. You know that even through those who are closest to you in this world. How often, friends, even our near and dear ones can be used by Satan to draw us away from the Lord. Those we love most in this world. How far can that take? Temptation, friend, can bring you, as it were, to the very brink of hell itself. And utterly turning away from the Lord. Even without falling, as it were, into hell, as it were. It can take you, the temptation can take you away very, very far. When you consider the Lord Jesus. Remember him on the pinnacle of the temple. And the picture we have there of being tempted to cast himself 
down. And the offer that kind of thing can come to the Christian. Take that door. Just go through it. That's what you need. There's the answer to your problem. This is where you will find comfort once again. Or else they might suggest to you, well, there's no harm in that. There's no harm in, 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 in turning aside. The Lord's not going to cast you away for that. It's just a little sin. Friends, it doesn't make it any less. It's the greatest of danger. Who's going to know anyway? You know what that is like at times? That temptation as well. And it's all about drawing you further and further away from God. Drawing you out of the path of obedience. And drawing you to think less of Christ. And to think less of the sin that is in your heart. All the pain and the agony and the struggle that many of the Lord's people go through faced with such things. Just once. Just a little one. This is what will keep you happy for now. Do you know what that is like? I am quite sure you do. Quite sure you do. Oh, friends, let us beware then. Fleeing from idolatry of flirting with the world, tempted to flirt with the world. We all know, if we are honest, that far too often we are seduced and we are beguiled and lured by what we know is godless and what we know is sin. Every one of us here knows something of that, some to a higher degree than others. It can be suggested, well, there's no harm in it. You haven't actually committed any sin. It's just the temptation. Yes, you've thought about it, but you haven't actually done it so that others would see, so it can't be that. It's hidden away from everyone. What a fearful thing. And how deceitful sin can be, how deceitful the evil can be, how deceitful your own heart can be in these matters as well. And friends, we all know what that is like. How far too often we can be seduced and lured away. After all, temptation is not sin. So what's wrong with, if so what if I'm tempted by these things? As long as I don't give in. Well, temptation is not sin in and of itself. But temptation is a dangerous step and door to what can be the most awful of situations for you. But, and being willing to be tempted as it were, and letting yourself be drawn to the very edge, the not as it were, crossing the line, can become a foolish situation if not sin itself. Well, what are you to do? Well, you flee from idolatry. Beware, friends, of even allowing the thought into your mind in any of these situations. So these are things that we have to be aware of. Temptation, no, in and of itself, it's not sin. But temptation can take you, if I can put it this way, right to the very door of what is very sinful and could be to the detriment of your never dying soul unless you watch and are careful about these things. But then, thirdly, there is no need, however, to despair. You see what we have here in our text, verse 13. God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What does this say? Basically, yes, there will be temptations, but you are not alone. God has uh, given you a way out of it. 
So nobody can say, I could do nothing about it. Nobody can say, well, I couldn't help myself. Well, God can help you because you're not alone if you are the Lord's here today. What is it speaking about? Speaking about grace in time of need. You see, blessed way of escape is what we have here. God himself in Christ provides this for us. You see, friend, again, a response to the temptation. The Lord Jesus is the way to escape. Flee from idolatries. What does that say in verse 14? Flee from idolatry. What does that mean? Surely, if you're fleeing from idolatry, what are you doing? You are fleeing to Christ. You are fleeing to Christ. It is one or it is the other. This is what we have said before us. And no one need fall into sin, however much you are tempted, or however strong the temptation. Because if we do, it's not because there's no way of escape. There is a way of escape. And that is what we have in the Lord himself. He has made a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. With the temptation comes a way of escape. And the way of escape is the one who was himself tempted. In all points as we are, and yet without sin. It's to him we have to go when we're troubled. Not to our own strength. Well, I can deal with this myself. I'll go to this man and this woman, and they'll help me to get over this. No, friend. You, they may well do, but your first port of call must be the Lord himself. And that way we don't need to despair in these things. Now don't you know yourself something of the faithfulness and the long-suffering of God? You see, what you'll find when you're faced with temptation is what we have here, a way of escape. And what do you do when you're faced with temptation? You look for that way of escape. You look for what he has done. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Are you going to serve the world and his idolatry and your sinful nature or are you going to serve Christ? You see, whatever we say, however great the temptation, none of us, by God's grace, none of us ever need to give in to temptation. Oh, you say that's easier said than done. I absolutely agree. But it doesn't mean that you cannot turn away from it. There is no excuse for it. So I can't help myself. Yes, you can. How are you going to? You look to the Lord afresh. And you trust him in your situation. And if you're anything like me, you know yourselves what I'm talking about here. How easy it is for us to be drawn away. But there's the Lord. There is Christ. Friend, look to him. It doesn't matter how often you've fallen away. It doesn't matter how, how often you've been tempted. It doesn't matter how many years. Here's the answer. This is what you do. He'll help you. That's the message of the word of God. And when we look back in our lives, friends, and we see how often we've succumbed to temptation. And you know you didn't need to. And the word of God tells us we don't need to. Because God is providing a way of escape. How ashamed we feel at times. You see, no temptation is above or beyond the ability of the believer to resist it. How? Or oh, not in your own strength. But he gives us the way of escape. He gives us the way of escape. That's what the text is teaching us here. Remember Peter was saved from falling into more sin. Simon, Simon, Satan has desired to have you. But I have prayed. He has desired to have you all. But I have prayed for thee. How important that is. That thy faith fail not. You see, this is what we need. And how are we going to know that Christ, as it were, interceding for us by going to him? 
And friends, is that not your own hope today? Christ's intercession for you. Faith then, friends, is there for us. Should we not be thankful that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Lord's people and his church? So when trials come, when testing comes, whatever its source, there is a way of escape with God. We are never alone. Remember Abraham going with his son to sacrifice. What happens? God provided that ram for him. We read about Paul. What does he speak about? He given grace in time of need. And that's for you and I as well. It's the same God. It's the same hope that you and I can have. The way of escape may simply be uh, grace to bear the temptation. That's something else, friends. That's the way of escape very often. Temptation comes, but God gives you the grace. And through that grace, you are able to turn away from it. Now, you may, and it's very possible, that you today here may well be continually faced with particular temptations every day of your life, or a particular temptation every day of your life. You know, some people... They have the difficulty, for example, with drink or with alcohol. It can be a problem every day. They have to face it every day. I was reading of someone who, two men who were converted. They've both been alcoholics. And one of the men, he could testify that since the day the Lord came into his life, that he never again had a desire for a drink. Never. But the other man, the Lord had also come into his life. And he says, I can't say that. But it is a struggle for me every day. Not that he wasn't a Christian. But you see, the temptation was different for each of them. But the grace of God was there for each of them as well. And so, friends, we have to be careful about judging others in these things. My grace is sufficient. Strength made perfect in weakness. You see, this is what we have to face. Whatever we are, whoever we are, temptations are there, but the grace of God is also there. And our escape in the temptation, though not taking away our own responsibility in these matters, is always dependent on the grace of God. But the grace of God is always there for us. That's the point, isn't it? We are never left on our own or need to be left on our own. God's grace is the way of escape for all his people and will always reach us as far as necessary. However terrible the temptation is, however far we've gone away from the Lord, what you'll get, friend, is just what you need, but you need to ask for it. And he will help you and strengthen you and encouraged. So be encouraged today in the midst of every difficulty you may have, in every trial you have, in every temptation that you are struggling with every day. When you are tried, it need not be beyond the grace and the strength to resist it that you will be given. And he will give grace in time of need. This is what is never. Flee from Idolatry is what we have to do. He will, with the temptation also, make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. A way of escape. That word escape, by the way, it is a word that is used regarding being surrounded on all sides in a war situation, an army situation, really. The enemy is closing in. The enemy is surrounding you. The situation looks absolutely hopeless. And then you find an escape route out of it. And you are saved out of it. Plucked out of the enemy's hand. There's a battle, friends. It can be a real war. If I can 
It was, it was often quoted, certainly over me, but there was either. Uh, Margaret Thatcher made these, these famous well-known words, you have to fight a battle more than once to win it. You have to fight a battle often more than once to win it. And that's how it can be, friends. We're faced with temptations every day. We're faced with our own sinful hearts every day. But here is the way of escape for us. The way of relief from any temptation is not to give in to it. And isn't that sometimes far too often is what we do? Far easier to give in to it. And what do we find? Oh, the pain then, and the struggle to get back to where we once were. But you can, friend. And God will help you in that situation. What we need to do is to resist it in God's strength, to look to the Lord. He is faithful and just and able to forgive us our sins. And this is the hope that we have from his own holy word here as well. So, However long you're a Christian friend, let him that thinketh he standeth, verse 12, take heed lest he fall. Take heed. Oh, but I've been a Christian for many years. Take heed. Oh, temptations like that some people have, whether it's drugs or drink or pornography or horrible, anything. Oh, that doesn't bother me at all. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. And some here probably never think about these things. But are you telling me there's not other things in your life? Are there not other situations that you know and you're thankful as well and you're not that those around you don't know anything about it? Things that are sinful in themselves, <coughs> tempted to certain areas in your life. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. Beware, friends, of your need. However long you're on the road, however short you're on the road, you need to be kept. And these temptations will come your way. But the Lord is able to help. You're not alone in your suffering through these temptations. There has no temptation taken you, but such as common man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted more than you are able to stand. You're not on your own. Here's a way of escape for you. Don't let the enemy of your soul discourage you. Don't let Satan suggest to you, well, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot even be someone who has a desire for the things of God, of these things in your life. That is from the pit of hell. God is able to help in every time of need. Don't doubt it. Trust in him. And when these temptations come, as they will, you see, they're not something that just appears once. And you might be able to resist one and, as it were, put it to one side. But I tell you, there won't be, it won't be far long until there's another one come before you that you have to struggle with. But in everyone, God is able to help and willing to help in time of need. Friends, let us trust in the Lord and you today and go forward in this strength. Whatever our past or our future or even our present today, he is able to help in every time of need. Amen. Let's go. O oh Lord, our God, we thank Thee and praise Thee that Thou art so merciful and long-suffering toward us. Bless Thy people. Remember any here who are particularly troubled at this time, uh, maybe with temptations that some of us couldn't understand or know anything about, but very real to them. And all of us, O oh Lord, in the secrecy of our own hearts of many of these things that we have to face. May we be given that grace that there was promised to fight even to a struggle with them so that we would glorify thee ultimately, that the praise, glory would be thine. For Jesus' sake, amen.
Let us conclude. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on and abide with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.